All right, guys, ladies and gentlemen, these kids were crowns. Well, part of these kids were crowns. <laughs> Awesome. All right. Uh, my name is Meredith, and for those of you that don't already know, I do the middays and the weekend afternoons here on Sonic. We want to thank everybody for coming out, and of course, we want to thank these kids who are crowns for popping by as well and fitting us into your schedule. Thanks for having us. Um, first question I want to ask you guys, uh, a pretty standard one, is what did you guys listen to growing up? Because I always find that interesting. Ooh, well, we've been lucky enough to tour with a couple of the bands we listened to growing up. We just got off a tour across Canada uh, playing all the hockey arenas with Simple Plan, which is a band that I listened yep. to a lot when I was like 11. So, yeah, that's one for me. Another band we actually just got back from Australia touring with was Dashboard Confessional, and there's, yeah. he's a guy we listened to a lot growing up. Yeah, I used to listen to him growing up yeah. too, quite a bit. Yeah, 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 absolutely. That's pretty cool. So is it, do you find it kind of surreal? Like, you go from listening to these people and buying their albums to sitting down and, you know, planning shows with them. Yes. Yes. I was sitting in a lobby in a hotel and Marilyn Manson came and sat next to me. Yeah. <laughs> and does that ever, like, I mean, you guys have been doing this for a while now, does that ever get easy or does that do you ever take it for granted or is it every single time you're still like wow this is incredible i'm still starstruck i don't know about you guys Definitely, yeah 100 yeah and we another while well, we were in australia we played with angels and airwaves so tom delong was there from blink 182 and i remember we just kind of said hi to him in the lobby yeah, and it's yeah. like i don't know i was really nervous i was like uh. yeah he, he no asked, kidding we, me and gypsy were hanging out outside he came over and asked us if we'd peed in the pool yet so <laughs> yeah <laughs> and you said yes yes well we had we had already he's <laughs> not gonna lie to the guy from blink at least a you? couple times <laughs> uh let's talk about gypsy why gypsy I mean, I realize it's because we share names here in the band, but why Gypsy? Um, we sensitive had, topic. You right? know, I was the last in the band, and we had a Josh. Josh, so you didn't Josh get to is keep my real name, name. <laughs> and you know what? It's just we're together all the time, and it's just too much work to have two people with the same name in a band. He's skipping the part where I threw him against the wall and was like, "Look, if you're gonna join this band, you've got to change your name." I'm yeah. the guy with the accent. <laughs> you're gonna be the guy with the nickname. Joe's the muscly one. Okay, so I get the need for a nickname, but I'm still not hearing okay. why why Gypsy as opposed to like I don't know. Well. He, I guess, originally it came from Matt named him. He's, he couldn't be here today, but he, uh, we locked the keys in the van, and Gypsy made this little coat hanger work and used these butter knives to Gypsy his way in there. In like kind of 10 seconds came. flat. This is so. all in between doing backflips, too. Right. So. Exactly. Yeah. And I can see where that would have been a better nickname than criminal in training. <laughs> Synonymous. Sketchy car thief guy. <laughs> I'm from East Van. So if you guys had a choice between doing you know, a massive festival like Sound Festival or Warp Tour or something like that, as opposed to you know, just having a, a, you know, a tour like Get Your Heart On Tour with Simple Plan, which one do you find to be more enjoyable? Uh, the, you know, they're different. I don't know about more. I, I would say that the festivals are cool because, like, each of us loves all kinds of different music and we get to go all see bands we like and fanboy out. Um, but it's, it's, it's different, but it's never, I don't know, it's never, it's, it's, just, it's never want, a pain. It's, it's one, a, one's busy, one's not, but they're both fun. Kind yeah, of. exactly. We did, we did them back to back and it was perfect. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that all the time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was good. The stadium tour with the bus was pretty nice and cushy. You know, we had, like, you know, we, we, it was our first tour, actually, we had our own bus. We are... The other tour we had a bus was with Fifi Dobson in the spring, okay. us, and four of her band, her tour manager, her merch guy, and her all shared a bus that slept 10. So if you're good at math, <laughs> that doesn't work. Yeah. But it was awesome. It was fantastic. This, this time we got our own bus, though, so that was great. Okay, and what's Fifi Dobson like? Uh, I thought she was awesome. What do you, yeah, what'd you guys great. think? Check. Fifi is great. She, uh, she got the back lounge. Like, a bus usually has, like, the front with, like, the sound system and the kitchen and the bathroom and the couches and hanging out. And then the bunks and then the back lounge is kind of like the chill-out private area. So she got girl time back there. Okay. No, no one was allowed to go back there. That was her world. <laughs> the whole thing was made into a bed back there. Yeah. Oh, okay. She yeah. just kind of pimped it out. Yeah. yeah. I She's like listening that. to Shania Twain all day long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It smelled like cinnamon back there. It was weird. <laughs> <laughs> not that I went. Not that I was there but I, it was close that's good she probably kept things clean too yeah yeah t typical girl styles that's a lie, With a lie. <laughs> that's a lie. she was actually the messiest Let's talk about the album jumpstart how is this uh how is this different than what you guys were first doing originally like well this was the first album where we actually had some help i guess okay uh, the first album we did uh, by ourselves in a studio we just pressed all the buttons and kind of figured some things out this is the first time we worked with um, some producers. So we worked with Garth Richardson, we worked with Matt Squire, and a few other names to kind of help us, uh, I don't know, complete the sound, I guess, and make us sound a little different. We learned a lot from them about songwriting and about producing, and uh, 
I guess that's going to kind of come through on the next album. Yeah. Right. And we worked with a label, which is kind of different because they sort of mentor you and like, you know, like they were the ones who kind of said like, you know, guys, like don't count these songs out. Like these two songs are really good. Yeah. And we're, we're, we were kind of like, oh, okay, sure. We'll focus on that. And then, you know, you build it into a song and then a couple of them became our singles. So yeah. And the biggest cool. difference is we had money to make this album. Yeah. <laughs> the, first album exactly. the first album we made with like, I think it was like 500 bucks, like total after everything. was yeah. Party Never Stops. It's like the last song that we wrote kind of. Um, me and Alex actually went to Garth Richardson's little cabin out in the middle of nowhere um, on uh, Vancouver Island and we wrote the song there and we ended up coming back and recorded it in my basement and the album version was mixed by a guy but the single version I mixed in the basement which is really cool and it and sounds exciting. amazing yeah and it's it really exciting way better amazing. it's crazy sometimes it's like you hear you know Justin Bieber on the radio and he's got millions of dollars mixed in a big studio in LA written by all these eight people collaborated mm. to make this song and then there's this song that comes up next and it was made in my basement by me and Alex two goofballs from Chilliwack so it's kind of <laughs> it's kind of cool so. yeah no for sure sometimes that's where the best music comes from i'm pretty sure that that's where um and he just won a Grammy, Grammy uh, Bonnie Vera, that's how he did his first album, exactly. was in a remote exactly. cabin somewhere, just himself with some recording equipment. And I mean, yep. sometimes that's just the way to go about it. I also want to talk about the show that you've got coming up this Thursday. That's right. Uh, we're putting on a benefit show for the BC Children's Hospital. Okay. And what made you guys choose that particular cause? Um, well, there's a fella in high school in Chilliwax, his name's Mac, and uh, he was diagnosed with a form of cancer of the throat um, last year. And he's uh, fought through it, and he's recovered. And so sort of in his honor, it, we, we had these kids wear crowns day given to us by the mayor last year, March 25th. Yep. So on that day, we announced we wanted to kind of do something for the community, give back. Uh, we gathered a bunch of sponsors, Royal Bank sponsoring it, you guys uh, presenting the show. Thank you very much for doing that. And uh, <laughs> yes, we're putting on a show for, t for 20 bucks. It's, you know, it's a cheap show at the Cultural Center in Chilliwack, and we just wanted to put on a show, raise some money, uh, donate to the Beast Children's Hospital, give back. Awesome. And uh, where can people grab tickets if they want to swing by? There's like 10 left total. There's 575 tickets and there's only a few left. Like we got a count last night and there was like 15 or 20 floating around, they okay. thought, yesterday. So, so if you guys don't have tickets, you know what this means, right? You got to get on that. www.chilliwackculturalcenter.ca. Center. The and you guys are home, obviously giving you the ability to do this. And uh, you guys have some downtime after you just finished doing the Canadian tour. And then you had to go to Australia. What a difficult life you lead. I know. What was us? What are you doing now at home? I heard a rumor that you guys come home and you still like work other jobs. Is this true? Uh, depends. It's, yeah. called, it's, called, <laughs> it's called double dipping. A double dipping. <laughs> that's called being. It's called being greedy. We're greedy. We're you know? greedy. I like it. I like to think of it as drive. I mean, you could just come home and like put your feet up and you know watch your own music videos on YouTube all day. But <laughs> what we I do, do though, <laughs> for a we little get while, we get together least. by weekly and do that yeah. as a group. But we're, we're working on the new album right now. We're writing and getting ready to, uh, you know, do some recording, and we're excited to uh, release a new album. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're hardworking dudes. Like, we, I think there's uh, a reason we got here is because we like to work and we like to have fun, and we usually do both at the same time. So we get home, we still work, we still have fun, and we're writing a record. Hopefully uh, it'll do as well as Jumpstart did here and around the world. So. Absolutely. I'm sure it will. Uh, we are excited to hear it at Sonic Nation, right, guys? Yeah. Yes. yes. Hold on. What? <laughs> <laughs> You actually did that. <laughs> That's right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, guys. We're looking forward to the show on uh, Thursday night at the Cultural Center, and I'm also super excited to do some more to as well. And you guys want to do some autographs and some photos? Wait, wait, wait. We, have a, we, have a, we, have a, we wrote a song. Can we sing it? It's a really short. It's really short. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 Nice and loud. Okay. okay. Half an hour if I do that. 
<laughs> yeah. Hey, the longest name in the world award goes to, uh, I can't even pronounce it. Just That's come good. up here, boys. That's good.